I'm on another sloping site. Just over a month ago, this was someone's backyard. Now, in two days, we're gonna pour a concrete slab and start building a brand new home. I'm Josh, a builder here in New Zealand, and this is my concrete slab sloping site start to finish video. When a site is flat, it's similar to the ones you've seen up in Akatarawa, it's really easy to do your foundations. When the site is sloping, similar to the section nobody wanted, it's way harder to achieve that concrete foundation. The thing is, the slope goes down, right? But obviously you want your floor to be level. And so there's a number of ways you can resolve that. On this site in particular, we have cut out the back half and we have filled in the front half. So just over here, we've got a retaining wall that is seven boards high, comes up to about here on me, that's 1.4 meters. That has been engineered design because it is really close to the existing house. But what that has meant is that we have now got from here a flat surface and existing ground level came out to about here before the site started to dive away. And then on the front side of the site here, we have a block wall that is also 1.4 meters high. So we've gone from a cut over there to a fill over here. Uh, we brought in about 65 cubic meters of fill and compacted that in layers. Not only did we have to bring in fill to build the site up, but along the border here, all, all the way around, and here, here, and here we have had to drill down two meters, fill those holes with concrete and steel, and that becomes a load bearing pile. Basically, um, remember the 9 video where I talk about good ground? You drive a bunch of timber piles under the foundation. Well, in this case here, good ground was about 1.5 to two meters below the surface. After we've bore in the fill and compacted the site and it's now dead level, we put a layer of polythene over the entire site. That's a thin piece of black plastic and basically that separates our concrete from our dirt and stops any moisture coming up into the concrete slab. So I'm standing on these white pods. These are large 1100 by 1100 polystyrene pods and they form the basis of what's called a rib raft slab. In between each pod is a channel. These channels here are 100 mils. These channels here are 300 mils. The 300 mil ones become an internal load bearing beam and the 100 mil ones just space each pod and have a one reinforcing rod up the middle of them. So we've had several inspections for this site. When we first started, we had what's called a siting inspection. Basically, we need to make sure that the house is where it should be in relation to all the boundaries. We do the siting inspection well before we even start any of this work. We've had three visits from the engineer, one for the piles, one for the footing steel. Uh, we've had four visits from the engineer actually, one for the block walls, and then a final inspection from the engineer for the steel mesh in this concrete slab. Actually, I just remembered the engineer also came and inspected the retaining wall. So that's five visits from the engineer. And then the council also comes back once more and inspects the polythene and makes sure that's down. If this wasn't a rib raft slab, we can also build it to 3604 standard, then that would eliminate the need for the engineer. But in this case, we need an engineer. The next thing we'll do on Monday morning is lay out a whole bunch of these chairs. These chairs make sure that we lift the steel up off the pods and keep it the perfect amount of distance below the surface of the concrete but above the pods. Uh, basically you just want even cover of concrete and you want your steel in the middle of that. So the guys will do that on Monday and then it's ready for pouring. Yay! I hope you have liked this concrete slab start to video as much as my last one. If you haven't watched that already, go and see it here. If you haven't already, go ahead, click subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next concrete slab.